And it is Thursday, so that means it's time to get a take on the news from the left, right, and middle. And from the left is New York University journalism professor Pamela Newkirk. And from the right is Washington attorney Horace Cooper. Hello to both of you. Hello. Good evening. Hey, good to see you. Good to see you. All right, so here we go. Let's start with this story that has been, it has popped up uh, many times over the years and then uh, inexplicably because of a comedian we've never heard of is back in the headlines, and that is these allegations allegations against Bill Cosby about uh, sexual misconduct against a variety of women, many of them having accusations that are strikingly similar to each other. So let's start here, and Pamela, I want to start with you. These are only accu accusations. There have been no charges. He's been indicted for nothing, convicted of nothing. There's been no proof of anything. Should his legacy, his prominence in his career suffer based on allegations only? Yeah, well, I think we need to separate the man from the artistry. And I think uh, many people, m many of us grew up uh, on The Cosby Show, and he introduced America to uh, an, an African-American life that many of us knew but never saw reflected uh, in mainstream media. And I don't think that legacy should be tainted by um, anything that the man did. Uh, we've seen other other uh, artists get into trouble, Woody Allen, Roman Polanski, and on and on, and the art lives on. The, the, the men, uh, you know, they're individuals with failings, and that's how we should see them. Mm -hmm. I think your perspective is sort of similar, right, Horace? Well, it is. I, I, I have to say I am troubled by the idea that it's okay to bring forward very, very serious charges but not take those charges in a way that allows for some kind of neutral uh, assessment of their validity. Um, the uh, World Wide Web has enabled, I think, these kinds of sort of character attacks to be far more effective today than they would have been 10, 15, or 20 years ago. I can't assess personally the accuracy or truthfulness of them. I don't want to cast aspersions on people who present them, but I also don't think it's appropriate to have to go through your life with people who can make the charges and not have to have those validated. But it's I, I, I'm bothered by it. But it's also troubling that many of these women have made these accusations over the years, and they only uh, got traction when a man uh, hmm. uh, brought them to, to the public's attention. So it, it's not like they're new allegations. Uh, these 15 women, many of them have, had made these allegations many years ago and, and nothing happened. So, uh, you know, just a little pushback on that because um, we can't just assume that even if these women had not press charges that these things never happen. And here's the thing, and of course we all know that Bill Cosby is refusing to comment on these allegations. He has canceled a couple of interviews. Of course we now know that NBC was working on a project that they have stopped development on, that Netflix has canceled a show that they were going to uh, distribute uh, with their company, but he has refused to talk about it. And I want to know from both of you guys, is this a mistake? And from a legal uh, standpoint, Horace, because there have been no charges, because no evidence has been uh, presented in a court of law, uh, should he feel obligated to address these charges or these accusations? Well, see, the PR man in me says that you have to be aggressive and be responsive, but the lawyer in me is, is really troubled that it's not just that these charges had been presented in the past and allegations, it is that even when they were presented then, there still wasn't, and you don't always have to go to court, but there are things that you can do and show that help us to get the sense of it. Again, I don't want to cast aspersions on the people bringing the allegations, but it's still not appropriate to just have that linger there. And in an in a open society, a person who has done the kinds of things that he has achieved in his life shouldn't be burdened with, I must now go and ferret out and respond to the conclusions, even if you haven't done things to help us have a justification for bringing those forward. At least in the case of the woman where there was a settlement agreement, that at least had the kind of merit for a conversation that these don't have. Is he making a mistake, uh, Pam, by not just safely saying, listen, I didn't do this? 
I, I really don't know if it would make a difference. I mean, what do you do? Uh, you say you didn't do it, but it, it's out there. Uh, you know, uh, I, I don't think it's going to make much of a difference what he says or doesn't say. And, and maybe that speaks to the but unfairness of allegations. But by not saying something, doesn't that in some way tacitly validate it? I mean, I think what he said is I've answered these allegations and they, they have no merit. So, I mean, he has said something. He's just not continuing yeah. to say something. Mm -hmm. Brian Singer, the director of X-Men, went through a phenomenon very similar to this, and a lot of the media had to pick. Are we going to present these charges as true? And then all of a sudden, as it goes through the process, a federal judge kicks out the, the accuser's claims for not being factual and for uh, not being valid. Again, it's a very, very uh, tightrope role to play mm -hmm. when you're commenting on this when you don't have some independent way of assessing the validity of the actual charges. Yeah, it's a very difficult situation no matter very. how you look at it. We're going to have to leave it right there. Pamela Newkirk, Horace Cooper, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, that's going to do it for us today. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow.